Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm, I'm the founder of Ashes to Beauty, and today I'm talking to you about how to create distance between yourself and the narcissist, and this question came to me after somebody had watched one of my other videos where I'm talking about the way that you need to detach yourself from the narcissist, and uh, the person had messaged me and asked me if I could explain more about how to do that. So this is that video to answer that question. So if you're in a place where you know that you're dealing with a narcissist, you know that the relationship is unhealthy, you know that the best thing for you to do is to separate yourself from the narcissist, but you still feel this pull to be with the narcissist. And uh, a lot of that has to do with the trauma bond that I've spoken about in previous videos. and. Uh, as well as your idea of what should have been from that relationship, what could have transpired if that person was different. Um, and there's a lot of outside pressures, right? We have societal pressures, maybe pressure from your family, from your culture, from maybe your religion, telling you that, you know, this is how relationships should work and that every relationship will go through rough patches and things like that. So maybe you're feeling like you don't have the support that you would like to leave the narcissist. And so that can add extra stress to your internal dialogue about what to do with this relationship. So um, all of those things impact when and how you leave a narcissist. So all of those uh, factors do play a role in your relationship with the narcissist and when you leave the narcissist and how you do so. For some people, it's that they know this is a toxic relationship, they don't care what other people say or think about them leaving the narcissist, but for them, it's really this internal struggle of like, you know that they're toxic and yet you can't help uh, but think about or remember the good times or that you just want this relationship to work out and you hope that they would change. And so in those cases, what you need to do and what you need to be focusing on and putting your energy into is distancing yourself emotionally and mentally from the narcissist. So if it's possible for you to go no contact with a narcissist, that is going to help you so much in terms of this whole process of detaching yourself emotionally and mentally from the narcissist. Um, and so if you've already gone no contact, good for you, I'm proud of you, stick to it. Um, if you cannot go no contact, if you're still living with the person, if you're, um, maybe you, you are separated physically from them but you have to maintain contact because you have children or you own a business together or whatever, um, there are still things that you can do. So first of all, I really encourage people to um, understand their different brain waves and the state of their brain. Um, it's important to know that you often are working on the higher level frequencies that your brain is uh, capable of operating in when you're in a trauma bond or when you're in a heightened state of alertness. So that is typically like the gamma waves and you need to know that that is quite possibly where your brain hangs out for most of the day and in order to lower the brain activity you can start doing so many scientific studies that prove to us that when you're in a state of meditation, when you're in a state of prayerfulness, when you're uh, in a fully relaxed yet somewhat engaged state, that is when ideas flow freely. That is when energy can kind of move and, and bring in new ideas and bring out old uh, memories and old things that don't serve us any longer. You need to be intentional about cultivating that type of state within your body, within your brain. There's also different hormones, different chemicals that your brain will release into your body, healing properties that are completely natural, completely organic to your body when you can put your brain into these types of states. So um, people who like to do running, uh, oftentimes people who have long commutes, their brains will get uh, trained to go into this state of um, 
of connecting to their subconscious more easily and the, the movement of ideas, the movement of possibilities, kind of a daydreaming state is easily accessed during these times. When you're getting into the shower, when you're um, when you're kind of on autopilot and you're not feeling super crunched for time, that's often when your brain gets into those states. So people who have traumatic events or who are used to living in a certain, uh, with a certain hypervigilance to them, their brains don't go into those states during normal uh, activities that you could be put on autopilot for. And so in those cases, you need to be intentional about it. So you need to set alarms. You need to set aside certain periods of time every day to put your brain specifically into these, these theta, beta, and alpha states. So what, what you can do is start with 10 minutes time, time blocks. I would like to see everybody putting aside at least three of these. So if you can start putting yourself into these states for 10 minutes, two to three times a day, that's a great place to start. So when you first wake up, before you reach for your phone, you, you just shut off your alarm, you're stretching, you're still in bed, close your eyes and put yourself into a meditative state. Start rehearsing a phrase. Start rehearsing or meditating a verse that came to you or something that really calms you down. So I do, I do prayer for about 30 minutes, but then I immediately put myself into this state where my brain waves are, are lowered even more because that flow, that connection between, you know, this waking world that we're about to enter into where we do work, where we interact with people, we take care of our families, and the spiritual world, the, the place where we are truly ourselves, where we can access who we were created to be in its pureness that bridge, that time period is very sacred and we should be tapping into that every morning. So I put myself purposefully into that place. It's where I get ideas for my businesses, it's where I tap into other things that would be helpful for my clients that I'm working with and it's super helpful for me just as a person to get into that state and to easily flow into that state whenever I want to, whenever I need to throughout the day. So set aside those 20 minutes, put yourself in that place. And for me in the morning time, what I do is when I, I do breath work as well when I'm in that state and I breathe in and I say yes, and I breathe out and I say Jesus. So I say yes to everything that is written in my book for that day. I want to do every single thing that is pl planned out for me and is laid out for me and I just really bring myself into that place of being because I know that this isn't a place that I need to strive to get to. This is just who I am and things will flow freely when I'm connected to who I truly am and to my source of being. So do that in the morning. Then in the afternoon, I usually about two o'clock is when I set another period of time. So I posted my entire schedule, which you can view on my Instagram post and the link to that is in the description of this video if you're interested in learning more about how I time block my days and why routines are super important and super helpful for not only getting your body to know how to respond and know when to wake up and know when to go to sleep and things like that but also to get your brain to produce to be most productive throughout your day and and to do it consistently not just you know in these short spurts of time but to consistently get results check out that post I settle down for another 20 minute period of time and I purposefully put my brain into these relaxed states, lower level frequencies where um, where your body is working with a lot less hertz than when you are fully awake, fully engaged in uh, completing a task. And I do that on, on purpose because typically I'll have more clients in the later uh, afternoon, early evening time frame, and I want to be able to have everything that I've been working on throughout that day kind of be released and making this blank space for me to work and focus with my clients who are in the afternoon and evening time period. So this is something that you can start doing and it's super important as I said because a lot of times you don't even know how to get 
into not being on high alert all of the time. But when you can find this space that's yours, that you've created, that you can go to anytime you want to, where you can truly uh, reconnect to who you are, to the source of your being, and you are, are intentional about creating that space and protecting that time, you're gonna find that not only are you detaching emotionally and physically, you know, you're, you're undoing that trauma bond, but you're also tapping into a whole bunch of new ideas. You're creating a life in that space that is totally obtainable, that maybe beforehand you didn't really know even what it would look like if you left the narcissist or if you didn't have the life that you're living now. And new ideas, new concepts, new ways of handling conflict are available in that space. That space, the entire atmosphere is just flowing with all of these different possibilities that we haven't grasped yet. And so if you can get yourself, you can start creating that space for your own self, for your own life, it's gonna really help you basically in every dimension that you occupy, in every realm that you work in to detach yourself from the narcissist and as well as start investing in your new life, you know, moving forward. What would your life look like when you leave the narcissist? Again, this is a place that nobody can ever take from you. It doesn't matter what type of circumstances that you're in, um, no matter how horrible your natural situation might look like, you can always retreat into that place that you have created where there's these endless opportunities, there's these endless escape routes available for you there. And this can take some time to develop and it can feel super uncomfortable when you first start doing this. Um, and again, especially if you find yourself not being able to relax, if you find yourself like you're always on a schedule and you're kind of always like go, 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 go. And that's because you haven't trained yourself to say, okay, this time period is when I really work like that and now this time period is when I'm in a different state of mind and then this time period over here is when I'm you know relaxing and I'm able to just be present in the moment so practicing these t techniques actually follow you throughout the day so your brain is going to work better when it's in the gamma state if you have these periods of allowing yourself to get into theta and alpha and beta brain waves and where you're able to kind of more more easily disconnect you're actually increasing your functioning for your brain when you are super focused on a task and you're really uh, intent on completing something so this is going to have benefits for you throughout your entire day throughout your entire life and plus it's something that's super important for you to start teaching your children how to do so that they have coping skills, have situations that they will face. You know, hopefully they don't have to deal with a narcissist in their life, but there's going to be difficult situations that they're going to have to face and teaching them appropriate coping skills and how to tap into another realm that just often goes unnoticed. Mention the fact that it enhances every other aspect of your life as well. In addition to this, if you watch some of my other videos on journaling, you can check that out here. Um, journaling is another great way to start distancing yourself from the narcissist because it gives you a complete timeline of everything that you've been dealing with. So you no longer have to just say, like, I maybe made that up in my mind. I maybe didn't interpret that situation correctly, but you're going to have an actual timeline of what really happened and you're going to be able to have something that is... Uh, um, separate from your emotional state when you're looking at the facts of the relationship between you and the narcissist. Remembering that no matter what you do, you cannot change the narcissist. He's always going to be that way. So doing the journaling and learning to put yourself specifically and, uh, and purposefully into the state of meditation, the state of prayerfulness for your brain is going to be super helpful, super useful for you. And I put a few um, suggestions if you're looking for places to start. Maybe you need help. Maybe you uh, don't feel comfortable just kind of getting into this space by your own self. So if that's the case, I put some guided meditation uh, links in, this, in the description of this video that you can go check out. And you can listen to those instead of just getting into this space by yourself.
when you start to do the journaling and being intentional with meditation and prayer, um, you can, you're going to free up a lot more space. I have a resource called Leaving the Narcissist, which you can check out here. And in there, I have a whole checklist for things to do when you're preparing to leave the narcissist. And so when you're doing this, you're going to be more able to um, think clearly about things like how much money do I need to save up? Where do I want to live? Who can I tell? Who can I rely on during this time? So all of those things, you're going to have a lot better grip on which ones to go with, what answers to choose, which paths to travel down, the more um, that you free up space and give yourself distance from the narcissist by doing journaling and doing this intentional meditation and prayerful techniques that I'm giving to you right now. So, so I hope those are helpful for you. I pray that you will do those. I pray that you will get started on coming up with a plan that works for you and just step by step like setting aside again these minutes every day to uh, distance yourself from and create this other space that nobody can come into for yourself that's going to be super helpful journaling that's also something that you can do that would be just amazing to kind of get a grip on what is happening and to help your heart heal from what has happened between you and the narcissist and even if you still have to connect to the narcissist in some way or another, um, you're going to have a lot more space between you where his words aren't going to affect you. His actions aren't going to affect you to the degree that they had in the past. And in turn, you're going to be able to give that safe space, create that space for your children, for your business and your employees or whatever the situation is that, that you're interacting in most of the day. So. I hope this video has brought some clarity about what it means to create some distance to put space between you and the narcissist. And by the way, this can be used not just for uh, situations with narcissists, but any case with people who have PTSD or who have suffered ex extreme anxiety. If you can start creating this other space, it not only retrains your brain, but again, it creates a space that you always have to retreat to no matter where you are. Even if you're traveling, if you're in a new place, you're in a new job or whatever, you're in an unfamiliar environment, you can always go into that space and it's something that can't be taken away from you so you will always have that with you. So check out the resources that I put in the description of this video and if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to my channel below and turn on the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video to this channel.